Hello everyone, welcome to this video. In this video, we are going to look at how to implement custom role-based access control or RBAC within Azure. This set of labs, I am completing AZ300 Microsoft Azure Architect Technologies lab series that are available on the GitHub from Microsoft Learning and I'm going to give you the link. You can study. So, <coughs> excuse me, there are two main objectives in this particular lab. The first is define a custom RBAC role and assign a custom RBAC role. So there are a lot of role-based access control roles that are available to you by default from Microsoft. So before you do anything, before you define a custom role, first take a look at it and see if there's something that you know you, you can use and meets your requirements. Now maybe you need a more restrictive access, role-based access control then you have to create your custom or maybe the one that is too restrictive and you have to, to create one that is a little bit less restrictive in that case you may also need to create something that is customized for your environment okay so this lab may take about 30 minutes so stay with me and if you can if you have a subscription just do it as we are doing this lab so what we're going to do three main tasks okay deploy an azure vm by using Azure Resource Manager template, that means this lab has some template file and parameter file that will upload and then will run some commands. Uh, identify actions to delegate via role-based access control and create a custom role-based access control in Azure AD tenant. All right, so how do you do all of that? So we're definitely going to go to the Azure and we're going to use the PowerShell. Okay this section if you do not have any uh, uh, so we are gonna uh, if you do not have any storage account then only you need this section if not we're just gonna start with uh, creating a easy resource group and we'll go with that so this portion is not required if you have a storage mount it's only required if you do not have any storage if you've never been to a, a cloud server environment okay so for this lab, we're going to use East US, which is my favorite uh, region for the deployment. So let's just refresh this page. Uh, leave page is fine. And let's quickly log in to our environment. And I want to take a quick look at my resource group. See, there's nothing I'm, I'm using right now. They all look good. There's nothing crazy going on. So here, um, what do you want to do? You want to come over here and click on the cloud shell and that should give you this window. And <coughs> if it's black, you know that <coughs> excuse me. It's giving you the cloud CLI, which is a bash environment. <coughs> and we want the power cell, just click the drop down and go to the power cell and just confirm it will give you the power cell uh, version of the window. And there we're going to run a command to create our our resource group and to do that what command are you going to run new az resource group and name this is the name is going to be and location we're going to say east us so let's just do that create our resource group resource group is a container where you keep a similar uh, type of resources together uh, so if you don't need you can get rid of all of them just by deleting the resource group okay so there we go so if I uh, did that, it just said that it's uh, the operation has been successful and we got this resource group now available for us to use as a container, <clears throat> okay? Now, as I said, some of the lab, they require a, a, a template file and what I'll do, I'll come over here, come down somewhere over here. So all you need, you need to go to all files AZ300 T03 module 4 and Azure deploy 9 and if you look at it we also need the parameter file. So let's just quickly go over there So go to the top folder from there go to all files from all files AZ0 T03 uh, module 4 and look at that so we have 9 and this so actually what we'll do we'll take 3 files uh, since we are here. Now there are many ways to download this. You can download the whole repository if you want. I just uh, uh, gonna do what I gonna do. Save page as, and uh, this is fine. So as you deploy, this is fine. I can do that. 
let's go get the other file which is parameters now I'm not going over this uh, uh, arm templates and I have done several videos where I have explained how to read the arm templates and kind of understand and you know if you especially if you are preparing for AZ300 or 303 is a new one you definitely need to understand at least understand what it, it's telling you if you if you read those files you gotta have that understanding okay so so when you're playing with these files pay some attention and read what they are uh, while they're doing the lab okay so with that let's come back so we got all the files that we needed <clears throat> so let's go back to the top folder again <coughs> instructions and we are working on this particular lab we have two more labs to go then we'll be done with this whole series okay so here we have done this okay so what we need to do you need to upload these two files that you uploaded and then we're gonna start the deployment by running the a, a new az resource group deployment command okay that's an important command to remember so uh, please remember the command all right so what you need to do right over here you can click on that tiny little button and click on the upload so we need the deploy 9 and right here it says this as your deploy 09 json is upload is complete do the same thing for the other one uh, we did the and then we need the parameter file let's get that one and it says this is also done so we are happy and then we'll just get this command and we're gonna paste the command over here okay and make sure that uh, it's a region is not specified it's all looks all looks good okay over here again uh, just kind of look at it what you're uh, passing for the te main template file your your tag that you have to use is dash template file and for the parameters file it's simple it's dash template parameter file and then you're just giving you the location of those files okay pretty, pretty simple to understand command here and when I do that the deployment should start and uh, the lab says we don't need to wait for the deployment it can, we can let it continue and we can move to the next phase of the lab so let's go back over here it says do not wait right so the next uh, our job is to identify actions to delegate via role based access control so <laughs> we can go to the resource group blade and we're gonna go to the IAM and on that IAM we're gonna look for the roles and click on the o owner and we'll review the permissions okay so as this is going on let this happen so we'll go to the resource group so let's see if I have the resource group available in here in this view I don't see that so all you need to do is refresh now you have this so click on it and once you click on it this is the access control or the IAM identity access management blade so you click on that one so now you have roles so now you can go to the roles and uh, what you need to find let's see this section is still loading uh, we need which role do we need to review owner owner blade and click on permission so let's look at the owner blades so owner okay so once we have the owner you click on the permissions so this is going to load all the permissions that we have uh, associated with the owner and if you look at it owner pretty much has everything most of the stuff the owner has uh, direct permission let's like, see you see most of them it says uh, all, 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 all so so owner really got a lot of permission so then on the permissions click Microsoft compute so let's find a Microsoft compute just to uh, look at what permissions what we, we we have under the permit so you come over here and click on the permit okay <coughs> excuse me so that permit first of all it's it's really cool so it's telling you how many different type of compute you know uh, scenarios you may have within Azure 
and you can look at it you can have availability set virtual machine size for availability set available compute option cap operation disk disk encryption i mean tons of stuff they gallery, gallery images images log analytics operations publishers man there's lots of stuff and over here you can review the permission read write delete and other actions okay so all of that you can uh, review from here under what kind of permissions you have for uh, each of these that would be for compute uh, the compute permissions uh, over here click on the virtual machine so let's take a look at the virtual machine itself so this is scale set so I wanna uh, it's not virtual machine is down, down here so I'm just gonna click on it so it's telling me permission I have log into virtual machine and log into virtual machine as administrator so let's see um, on the virtual machine, review the list of management actions that can be delegated through RBAC Note that they include the deallocate virtual machine and start virtual machine actions. I didn't see that. Do you see that? Virtual machine owner preview. I don't see those two actions unless they're like. Let's click on this. I guess this uh, clickable links they don't work very well come back Oops. I wanna collapse this so usually when you have this kind of symbol in Microsoft I would expect this to collapse but they are not collapsing so not good not good not good so virtual machines Okay, so under virtual machines in here, owner preview permitted actions, you have so many different options. And what it's asking us to check, deallocate and start virtual machines if those actions are there. So management option, this is the management options. Okay, so deallocate, what is deallocate? Deallocate virtual machine, we found it. And start the virtual machine, uh, start the virtual machine, you see that? Okay, so we have now verified uh, that as an owner, we have all bunch of permissions and those two permissions they wanted us to check uh, we have now checked this on the virtual machine blade so we have done that uh, create custom RBAC role so that's our next uh, job to create a custom RBAC role now remember that we have already uploaded this file okay uh, they're here they're saying uh, review the content so if you look at the content it, it's a JSON file you have certain parameters in here that you are defining uh, name virtual machine operator so that's a custom role that's why you say custom in, in parenthesis id is now is custom is true usually for the default one it will show up as false you put your own description then under actions you are telling what actions are permitted so under compute you are giving all types of read actions then from extra compute you are saying virtual machine deallocate action that you are also giving and here you are also giving Microsoft uh, virtual machine start action but you are not giving any other actions ok assignable scope here you see subscription and then subscription ID now this subscription ID I bet you that we are, we are going to have to change and you have to find your own subscription ID before we create the role because this is just a placeholder right so here what you can do so we need to get as I said so you, this is this file is I don't think we have loaded we downloaded so let's go back to our PowerShell okay looks like this deployment is also done by the way okay so from here we're gonna upload the last file that we needed which is custom role definition file okay so that upload is completed so what we want to do we want to get the subscription ID first so that should get us the subscription ID and it's stored in here once we have that uh, we're gonna run this command and this is gonna go inside this particular file and it's gonna replace the subscription ID with the right subscription ID okay so that we can properly use the command so let's just paste it and hit enter it should have done its job 
Uh, now we can use this custom rule as an input. Okay. Uh, now we have since we have fixed and assigned the proper subscription ID. So let's just do that. So click on it and hit enter. So now you know is custom true. Allow start and stop. And here is the cust uh, uh, our subscription ID that's uh, uh, that's available in this particular uh, custom RBAC rule. Okay. So in here, what do you need to do? Hold on. All right. So we are um, almost over here. So we can run the next command. I think we are ready for that. So we just did this command, which imported everything. So the next command would be this. Okay. So this, what you're running, uh, you have just changed the subscription ID to the proper subscription ID. Then you're saying new AC role definition from this custom role definition. You got the new role definition. Once you have created, then you are going to get the role definition and verify. Okay. So it should give you the give you the new role that you have just uh, created so let's uh, just run the command and it should tell you the details about this particular role and there we go so this is the details what actions are permitted it's microsoft compute you can read any type of computer compute resources within the azure environment uh, but what management can you do you can only deallocate a virtual machine and if a virtual machine is turned off you will be able to start the machine but you cannot do anything like if the machine is running you cannot shut it down okay very restrictive rule all right so let's go back over here so that we have already done with that assign a test custom rbac rule then in this section we're going to do create an azure user ad user and create a rbac rule assignment and then test the assignment as well so in the azure portal we're gonna do connect Azure AD. So this is gonna connect our Azure Active Directory module. It will enable us to talk to the Azure AD. So all you need to do is just run the command within the cloud shell, and that's it. So once we have that, uh, you're gonna get the domain name of the account that you're using, and uh, you can do this. I think Eco still works in this environment, so you can like try to do the domain name and anytime you are creating a variable if you want to know what you are storing you can run that so for this one this is my uh, domain name like is a whatever 300 github outlook dot on microsoft dot com okay uh, so once we have that what we can can do we can create a ad user and we're going to run all of this command and if you can take a look at this command, it may look a little bit crazy, but it's pretty simple. So basically, this one is going to create a new object. What kind of object? It's a Microsoft Open Azure Active Directory model password profile. So what do you think a password profile is going to have? It's going to have a password and a username or login information, right? So look at that. So, so once you store this, this one has a variable, this dot password. Now you can you can populate that one it also has force change it, it has different properties like it's an object right so force change password next login you're saying false okay uh, so we got that so let's copy all of this so in here when you're running the command uh, the new ad active as you ad user what you're doing you're saying account enable yes true display name you're providing the name okay right then you are sending the same password profile you have created you have created in the previous steps you are providing a, 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 a nickname male nickname then you are providing a user principal name okay so a lot of information you are providing in one command so let's just copy all of that and uh, run these commands and let's see what happens so over here all we need to do paste all the command okay and what what happened just all of this command they're actually done already as soon as you paste it this is the only command it's not yet run so hit enter now you have the command so it's telling you that now i have a user this is the name of the user 
here is my user email address and all of that what kind of user is that this is a member user that means that's the member of the azure active directory uh, that we have so uh, if you want to know the get user so you can run this command over here what do you think is going to tell you it's going to get you the user okay that's the user principle name and that's what we have we have uh, defined when we created the user so that all looks really great so create a RBAC role assignment so we have already done that right uh, we have created the custom role uh, from here what we want to do we want to go back to the IAM blade and we are going add a role assignment place it with the special so they are saying that just uh, create a custom role okay so let's go to this blade first so let's go back to our resource group okay resource groups and then go back to this resource group go to your IAM blade so once you are here role assignment is probably where you want to do this let's see uh, a rule assignment and then uh, you click the add button so from here you click the add button and here look at that you have an add custom role and that's what you want to select so here they are saying just call that new role as this so pre in the previous step we have done this work uh, using the uh, powershell now we are doing it from the word from the uh, from the web interface okay Assigned to is the users group service principle. So, assign to what is my assignable permissions? We haven't done this assignable scope. I don't. I don't see the description. Maybe their assign role. We got that. Assign access to. It's not. It's not doing anything. And select lab user one. So, okay, let's 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 see permissions. Add permissions. We have not assignable scope. It's already selecting that resource group. JSON review and create previous basics. So come back to the basic and let's. Uh, uh, let's pin just a minute here. All right, let's stay back one. So I think what they are still using the add role assignment. So let's stick to this blade. So just click on the add role assignment, and uh, over here uh, we are gonna choose the custom role that we have created most likely. So this is gonna be the virtual machine operator. So let's go over here virtual machine operator where is my virtual machine operator virtual machine operator custom you see so this is the role that we have so actually in this one we are not really creating a new role we are just using the role that we have created and we are assigning to this new guy and who is the new guy the guy is this so lab whatever the user or something so let's just uh, search for that guy so let's get this guy and say save so now this guy should have the virtual machine operator custom role assigned to him okay so that's all you needed to do uh, next is taste the RBAC role assignment so start a new private window and then go there so let's uh, create a new private window let's go over there so put in azure.com and from here uh, use a name these are principal name as you've identified in the first task of the exercise so this is the guy who I, we want so let's just get his uh, user principle so that would be this right so go to over here this is the private window is a private window so let's uh, sign in with a different account and uh, use different accounts so provide that and now it's asking for the password and I think we have uh, this password that we 
can use is the initial password let's see, sign in and it should ask me to change the password or oh, we selected that uh, we do not have to change the password so that's even better so maybe later so we are in so we are already uh, in our virtual machine so I'm still in the private window so from here you can go to resource group I, sh I have read access to all compute resources with my custom role so gee I don't even see anything okay so let's see what is what's the lab saying the lab saying uh, navigate to the resource group note that you are not able to see any resource group interesting so from the resource group view I'm not able to see anything and, and that's true there's nothing there so in the all resources note that you are able to see only the VM so only the VM is something that I can see so let's let's prove that so from here if I just search by well let's just search for virtual machines let's see if under the virtual machine there is going to show up or not yeah there we go so although I didn't have any view any access but I do have access to this virtual machine and we can look at it we can look at the properties so look at that I have a stop restart connect capture delete we have so many operations available that are at least they're cl clickable some of them may say oh you can do that right but we we are in there it says try restarting the virtual machine so let's let's just do that and what is going to happen you think it will say no you cannot do that because we only said that you can start a machine not restart restarting requires a stopping of the machine as well right so here is the error message that you got so now you have a custom role that we have applied to this new person and he can manage the virtual machine but he can only deallocate or start but if there is something already running he can't do anything with the machine all right so we are doing really great actually we have done wonderful in this lab so everything is done for the lab so at this time I would highly recommend that you get rid of the resources that you have created and uh, all you need to do this command it just takes the resource group that you have created as part of this lab and it will just delete everything for you uh, this command is in the Azure CLI so all you need to do is go to the bash command say confirm and what you will do once the shell is coming up you paste the command and look at that it says as a is a group list so it's gonna look for any group that's created with the easy 30009 and then it's gonna run a command easy group delete to delete all the resource groups that's coming out as the output of the first command all right so hit enter it's a no it is that means it's gonna it gave us our CLI back and a job has started in the background for the division process all right will this with this this is the end of this video if you are work, you're studying for the exam just be familiar with the all kinds of uh, custom role assignments how you can do that how, how you can use it especially look at uh, the fields that you really have to change to come to to prepare your custom role SMS like uh, is custom you, you have to definitely change the ID you don't need to do anything uh, the role will automatically assign a new ID for you uh, the actions and non actions those are things where you are defining what you are permitted to do and what you are not permitted to do so be familiar with all that and good luck with the exam if you like the video please subscribe refer to your friends and again good luck with the exam